guys, uh, welcome to Bonsai U. Thank you so much Bjorn uh, for this opportunity. Today I will be your teacher and uh, I'm gonna work with my students uh, on this beautiful uh, Scots pine. I collected uh, this tree in France four years ago. Uh, the tree was uh, snaking down the hill and then uh, as soon as I bring the tree back home, uh, I plant the tree upwards uh, to show the features uh, of the trunk. It's a very interesting material and uh, is the type of material I'm always looking forward to when I go collecting in nature. Trees with nice character, good uh, trunk line, good curves uh, and these trees, uh, this tree has uh, beautiful feature to become uh, a beautiful bonsai, a beautiful bungin uh, after the work. Normally when I collect pines uh, I try to bring uh, home uh, as many roots uh, as possible. On this tree especially I had to cut the ear before a big tap root that was uh, snaking up the hill. So I cut that root and after one year that I was sure the tree will survive uh, with the finer roots uh, around the base, uh, I collect the tree and plant uh, in pure pomace. Generally after two years uh, I repot the tree, when the tree is strong I repot the tree and clean all uh, the original soil because I don't want any original soil in the new bonsai pot when I start working the tree. It's no good to have a soil that can hold moisture and generally this tree grows in clay so that clay is very bad uh, for the bonsai purpose because they don't allow the, the root ball to stay dry. Pines love a lot of air in the roots, so we need to be able to grow them, especially the first years, in pure pumice or any other uh, type of soil that can allow the air to be in the roots. This will help the roots to breathe and also another very important thing will help the mycorrhiza to thrive and grow a lot because mycorrhiza is helping the tree to extract nutrients from the soil. Pomice is a neutral soil so when we give food to the tree and generally I fertilize a lot the first years using a prodigy is a fertilizer called Prodigy, very high in nitrogen, is 16 in nitrogen because I want the tree to get as strong as possible in the shorter amount of time. As soon as I start working on the tree, I load down a little bit that amount of fertilizer because I don't want the wire to bite in before the branches get into position. So the plan for today is uh, to study the tree, understand uh, which points uh, we have to look uh, when uh, we want to work uh, a Yamadori material like this and then uh, we're going to start uh, the heavy work that will be bending branches to rebuild uh, a nice uh, shape for this tree to put in evidence uh, the focal points. When I repot the tree last spring, so a year ago, I already select what I think is the front of the tree for me. I have a beautiful transition between the different part, the base, the first section of the trunk. I'm able to cover a little bit visually and short visually this section that is a little bit straight even if there is a nice twist on the bark and then obviously I have in the front what I consider the best feature of the material that is this snaky part going up until here. I have a beautiful trunk line going up but unfortunately this branch doesn't have enough branches to make me doing the decision to cut this side branch that has a lot of green. So what I have to do and thanks to the pine that is very flexible, I'm gonna use all the branches coming from this section to rebuild part of the lower green of the tree. The idea is to have a nice first branch here and another branch here to cover visually a little bit this section and kind of frame with those lower branches 
this uh, part. So most of the upper branches will be banded down and around the tree. So we're gonna hide the bending behind the tree and try to hug, so to frame the trunk line with branches coming in the front and in the lower part. And then after that, I will use some of the little branches I have in the top to create uh, the new top of the tree here. So we're gonna see here some bending, one band on the top, but uh, we're gonna be always able to recognize the trunk line of the tree. Now that this part uh, is naked, uh, we're gonna steal uh, a lot of focus, a lot uh, to the side one, but when we're gonna frame this part and we're gonna hide uh, this section, everything will be more on the vertical and all the trunk will be framed by branches. So, we're gonna start by cleaning the needle and preparing the branches with the raffia because every single branch will be bent. We have always to protect with raffia. I use wet raffia and on top of the raffia I use tape to hold the moisture. Because we are in winter now, after the work, the tree will be stored in the greenhouse so we can protect uh, all the band and everything from freezing outside and the tree will, you know, will afford uh, the aftercare better because it's an environment uh, here in the greenhouse where the temperature is controlled. Before putting the raffia on a branch, uh, we're gonna remove uh, all the low, all the nubs, uh, so every small little branch uh, that died uh, in nature. So we can uh, put the raffia nice and tight uh, all uh, along uh, the length uh, of the branch. Uh, and also removing them, uh, we can avoid uh, risking of break uh, in those positions where the little nubs uh, were. We always try to put the raffia in the direction we plan to bend the branch. So raffia, tape and also the wire will help the fiber of the branch to stay nice and tight when we bend the branch. Always open the raffia fiber with your fingers to create a nice uh, layer. Don't cross the raffia over and always try to put like a bandage. This will help uh, to have uh, not such uh, a thick layer but uh, having the raffia nice and tight uh, to protect uh, and hold uh, the fibers of the wood.